Do you know how a fire hose works? Inside the fire engine is a big tank of water. At the back of the fire engine, there are some levers and switches. This is called the pump panel. This controls how much water will flow out of the engine to be used on the fire. Next to this is a large pump and a wheel called a rotor. When the lever is pulled, the rotor spins around very fast. The water flows into the spinning rotor, which creates something called water pressure, which pushes the water out of the hose really fast and really far, which puts up the fire. Isn't that interesting? Let's go to the back of the fire engine to see all of that happening. And the firefighters have given me special permission to use the fire hose. And remember, you should never try this yourself. I can only give it a go because I'm with specially trained firefighters. To make sure I'm safe, I need some protective clothing. <laughs> it smells a little bit. And now, this huge metal arm inside the hopper has come down from the lorry and is dragging all the recycling up and pulling it to the back. The recycling lorry, it sounds alive. It's making so many noises. Even when it stops, it goes, It's a bit like it's sneezing. That was so much fun. Let's see it again in slow motion. Here comes the bin, tipping, tipping, and there goes the recycling. Hello, I'm Maddie, and guess what? I bet that you've been to the toilet today. I know I have, and a lot of other people will have too. We've all got toilets in our homes, and yours probably looks a lot like this one. Toilets are everywhere, because we all need to use them. But do you know how a toilet works? Let's find out. How does it work? There are two parts to a toilet. This big square part is called the cistern and it's full of water. And then this bit underneath is called the bowl. Have you ever wondered how your poo and wee disappear when you press this button? Well, to find out, we need to look deeper inside the toilet. When you press the flush button, it moves a lever, which pulls a plug out of a hole at the bottom of the cistern. Fresh water flushes out of the cistern into the toilet bowl below. The water is so powerful that it pushes through the old water and your wee or poo out through the pipe at the bottom of the toilet bowl. When the water has left the cistern, air travels up the pipe. It makes a funny gurgling noise. I'm Maddie, and today I'm on a building site. Just think, the house or flat where you live once started off like this. A great big pile of bricks and wood ready to be made into a building. You should never go onto a building site without a grown-up, but we've got special permission to show you something really exciting. A lot of the things used to make houses are very heavy. Far too heavy for me to pick up, so I need something super clever to help me. Can you guess what it is? A crane! 
crane. A crane is the safest way to move things around that are too heavy for people to pick up. But do you know how a crane works? Let's find out. How does it work? A crane. Before the crane can do anything, it needs to stand on its own feet. You should never play around vehicles. Always make sure you're near a grown-up. These special feet keep the crane steady when it picks up heavy things and stops it rolling away. Look how it's lifting the wheels off the ground. Hamsters are nocturnal, which means they are awake at night and they sleep during the day. I've got a special camera with me that will let us see in the dark. Oh, here he comes. There he goes. <laughs> Look at his little feet, spinning the wheel round and round and round. He's going really fast, isn't he? <laughs> no, he's still going. <laughs> well done, Herbert. But do you know how a hamster wheel works? Well, let's find out. This is a wheel just like the one in Herbert and Helena's cage. This bit inside is called the running track because that's where a hamster runs. And can you see, if you look closely, these little ridges on the inside of the running track? This is where a hamster uses its paw to grip onto the ridges and pushes the wheel around and round. and today I've come to see a very exciting vehicle. See if you can guess what it is. It carries people in it, it doesn't have wings and it has a big piece of metal on top that spins round and round. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's a helicopter. Noisy, isn't it? This bit of the helicopter is called a landing skid, and there are two of them. They're the helicopter's feet. This bit at the front is where the pilot sits to fly the helicopter. It's called the cockpit. And then this long part at the back of the helicopter is called the tail boom, and at the end of it is the tail rotor. This spins round and round when the helicopter flies, just like the big rotor at the top. This big rotor is really important because it helps make the helicopter fly. But do you know how a helicopter rotor works? A newspaper. One of the places your old recycled paper might end up is here, in a paper mill. Here they turn your recycled paper and cardboard into this, newspaper, and I'm going to show you how they do it. This is all recycling that was collected from people's homes and offices and turned into bales at a recycling plant. The bales are being placed onto this moving belt where they go to be broken up into loose pieces and then are carried all the way to a special machine called a pulper. And this is the pulper. It spins all the old paper round and round and mixes it with water. So it's a bit like a washing machine. This pulper is enormous. It's one of the biggest in the world. All of the spinning and mixing with water brings the paper up and turns it into something called pulp. It looks like muddy, sludgy water, doesn't it? I don't want to get too close, so let's use my special camera instead. Are you ready? 
Let's go for a dip. Oh. Can you believe that this muddy, sludgy pulp is going to become newspaper? Yuck. Ready? Steady, Paul? What's that? This is Madison. And this is Malika. And there's something really clever that means the cats can come in and out of the house whenever they like. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a cat flap. It's like a little door just for cats. But do you know how a cat flap works? Let's find out. How does it work? A cat flap. To show you how a cat flap works, let's see if we can get Madison and Malika to use it. They like to sneak in and out throughout the day, so I'm going to set up two special cameras. One on the inside, and one outside. They like to come out to play after they've had their lunch. Watch what happens. Our cameras are all set up. Is Madison. Is she going to get through? Yes, she's in. Whoa, that was fast, wasn't it? I tell you what, let's watch it again, this time in slow motion. Watch how Madison pushes it open with her nose. Did you hear the sound that the cat flap made when the door opened and closed? Listen again. Sounds like a click, doesn't it? We're in a consulting room where you see a doctor and this is the machine. It's called a blood pressure monitor. Your heart pumps blood all around your body, to your head, to your fingers and toes. And doctors and nurses use blood pressure monitors to check that your blood is flowing nicely through your body. It's called checking your blood pressure. But do you know how a blood pressure monitor works? Let's find out. How does it work? A blood pressure monitor. This is Amanda and she's going to check my blood pressure. Blood pressure shows how easily blood passes through your blood vessels. And to measure it, she's going to use the blood pressure monitor. The first thing that Amanda is doing, she's putting this bit is called the cuff around the top of my arm. Now Amanda is pressing a button which makes air travel from the machine through this tube and into the cuff. The cuff is blowing up. It's a little bit like blowing up armbands when you go to the swimming pool. I love boats, do you? I like the way they glide about on top of the water. But do you know how a boat moves? How does it work? Let's find out. How does it work? A boat. Come on, we're going for a boat ride. you can see there are lots of different parts to a boat. That's the front, the pointy bit, and it's called the bow. And this is the back, it's called the stern. And then that is the engine. And in the middle we have places to sit and put our things. At the 
the bow, there is something called an anchor. Peter is lowering the anchor into the water down to the bottom of the lake, where it will hook into the ground and hold the boat in one place. But there are lots of parts of the boat you can't see. Do you know why that is? <laughs> it's because they're in the water. The water helps to move you down and it also makes you go faster and stops you getting stuck. But where does all that water come from and where does it go? Let's find out. Does it work? A water slide. When you go on a water slide, the first thing you need to do is climb to the top. Now, this is the top of the slide. And can you see there's lots of water running down it? This is what's going to help me slide down. First, I need to sit down like this. All I need to do is push off. But first, I'm going to put my special camera on my head so you can see exactly what it looks like as I go down the slide. Are you ready? The water is going really fast and taking me with it. Special camera is waterproof. <laughs> that was so much fun. Did you see how the water was carrying me down the slide? The water is always flowing downwards, and when you go on a slide, you go down too. And that's because of something called gravity. you like about bath time? I like that the water is nice and warm. But do you know where the water comes from? How does it get into the taps and how does your bath water get warm? How does hot water work? Let's go and find out. How does it work? Hot water! Your bath water starts its journey here. Reservoir. A reservoir is a big lake that's used to store water. The water collected here will come from rivers and streams and also the rain. All the water that is collected here in the reservoir is clean so that it's safe. And then it's sent through pipes to our houses. There are lots of pipes under the roads and pavements where you live and some of these big pipes carry water all the way from the reservoir into your house. In your bathroom at home, you might have a sink and a tap just like this one. And to get water, all you need to do is turn the tap on. Amazing, isn't it? But the water that comes from the reservoir is cold. So how does it get hot? know how a lock works. How does it work? A lock and key. Can you see that when I turn the key, this bit of metal goes in and out? This is called the deadbolt. And when the door is locked, the deadbolt goes into this slot in the door frame so that it won't move when I go to open it. But when the door is unlocked, the deadbolt moves out of this slot and the door can open once again. But do you know what happens inside the lock? How does the key make the deadbolt move in and out? Let's find out, shall we? I've got three different locks here, but they all work in the same way. 
why don't we use my special camera to take a closer look and see how they work. This is the key. And this bit is the keyhole. The key goes into the keyhole and into a tube. And the tube is called a barrel. Now, when you turn the key inside the barrel, this bit, the deadbolt, moves in and out. Can you see that? And it's the deadbolt that locks the door. But do you know how a bus ramp works? Let's find out. How does it work? A bus ramp. I've come to this factory where they make bus ramps. Here, they make almost 2,000 bus ramps every year for buses all over the world. Here's what the ramp looks like before it goes into a bus. Let's take a closer look. Underneath the bus, next to the wheels, are airbags called bellows. They're full of air and keep the bus level. When the driver presses a button inside the bus, an electric signal goes to the bellows to tell them to let some air out. As the air comes out, the bus gets lower on one side. It's a bit like letting the air out of a rubber ring. When the bus is level with the pavement, the driver presses another button to make the ramp come out. Under the doors, there's a hidden box. Inside the box is a bar fixed to the ramp. When the driver presses the button, the bar moves forward and pushes the ramp out. When the ramp rests on the pavement, it's ready to be used. And then the ramp goes away. The bellows fill back up and the bus drives off. the piano. It sounds lovely, doesn't it? But what I want to know is what's going on inside the piano. Do you know how a piano works? Let's find out. How does it work? A piano! We are in a piano shop. There are lots of pianos here, but they don't all look the same. This type here is called an upright piano. And that's because the main body of it, that's this bit, stands upright, just like we do. But this type here is called a grand piano, and it stretches out this way. Instead of upright, it's a bit like lying down. Playing a piano starts with this, a keyboard. And all these white and black bits are called keys and each one plays a different note. Have a listen. Did you hear how each key plays a different sound? Well, there are 52 white keys and 36 black keys and each one plays a different note. But do you know how it works? Well, to show you, we need to open this piano up. Whee! Under the bridge! <laughs> And when you're finished playing with the train, you just pull the carriages apart and the magnets become unstuck like this. But do you know how magnets work? Let's find out. How does it work? A magnet. Magnets are made of metal and they're really fun to play with. Look what happens when you put two magnets together like this. It feels like they're pulling towards each other until eventually, snap, they pull together. Did you hear the snap sound the magnets made? But look what happens if I turn this carriage the other way round and use this magnet instead. 
no matter how hard I try to push them together, they just don't want to connect. This time it feels like they're pushing away from each other. Why does this happen? On the end of each train carriage are magnets. They look the same, but are actually different. Every magnet has two sides, called poles. One side is called the North Pole, and the other side is called the South Pole. And the whole magnet is surrounded by an invisible area called a magnetic field. When a North Pole magnet goes into the magnetic field of a South Pole magnet, they're pulled together. But when you turn them around so that the South Poles face each other, the magnetic field pushes them away. Let's find out. How does it work? A zip. <laughs> I love the sound a zip makes when you open and close it. Listen carefully. Now, if you look closely at my zip on both sides, you can see that all the way from top to bottom are these little bumps. These bumps are called teeth. Now, if I undo my zip, can you see at the bottom on this side, there are two metal bits. These are called sliders, and that's because they slide up and down, and they have a pull tab on them, so you've got something to hold on to. Now, if you look at the bottom on this side of the zip, there isn't a slider, there's just this plastic bit. It's called the pin. To do the zip up, you need to take the pin and slide it through the slider into this slot. When it's securely locked in place, you can hold the pull tab and pull the zip up, and I'm in. To undo the zip, all you need to do is pull the pull tab down all the way to the bottom and it pulls the two sides apart. Brilliant, so that's how you open and close a zip. But how does it work? How do the teeth lock together? Have you ever been on an escalator? I'm going to take this one to get to the floor below and to get on an escalator safely, you have to wait for a step to appear hold on to the handrail and then quickly step on. Let's go. Now, can you see that I'm stood still, but I'm somehow moving? That's because the escalator is moving downwards and it's carrying me to the floor below. You should never play on an escalator, but I've got special permission to take a closer look. Can you see how the steps just disappear here at this metal yellow edge? It looks a bit like a comb, doesn't it? The steps go underneath and disappear. But where do they go and where do the steps come from? Well, to find out, we need to look inside and underneath an escalator. Inside an escalator, the stairs are linked together in one big loop. It moves round and round. The stairs are attached to two sets of wheels called gears, one at the top and one at the bottom. The gears at the top of the escalator are called round bike chains. They look a bit like a bike chain. The gears at the bottom run along a track like a train. The gears have teeth on them, and when they turn, they pull the loaded stairs around with them. How does a cake work? Let's find out. How does it work? A cake. To show you how a cake works, I'm going to bake a cake for the party. Now I need to mix all of our ingredients together in a big bowl. In goes the sugar with the flour, and then the butter. And now for the fun bit, cracking the eggs and the milk. Oh, and we mustn't forget this. This is called baking powder, and it's a special ingredient that will make sure our cake rises in the oven. Now we need to mix all our ingredients together. And for that, we need an electric whisk. Watch this. 
because it works really quickly, it's going to put lots of air bubbles into the mix. Listen to the sound of the electric whisk. It's like an aeroplane taking off. Okay, have a look in my bowl now. Can you see that all of the different ingredients have been mixed together into a smooth, runny mixture? But how do car brakes stop the car? Do you know how car brakes work? Let's find out. How does it work? A car brake. To see how car brakes work, I've come to a garage. A garage is a place you come to if a car needs to be checked or fixed. Have you ever been to a garage before? This is one of the car's wheels. This is the tyre and the metal bit in the middle is called the rim. But if you look through the rim, can you see there's another metal disc? That is part of the car's brakes, but we can't see it very well, can we? I've got an idea. Paul is a mechanic and he's going to help show us the car's brakes. The car is being lifted on this special lift. This is how mechanics get under a car to safely fix things when they go wrong. Listen to the sound of it. noisy, isn't it? And it must be really strong to lift an entire car. It's very high up, isn't it? 